This is an example of what I like to call the double reverse trick for integration by parts. And the whole problem here is that in integration by parts, so again, the formula that we're trying to use here, is like this. And what your hope is, is that you can choose one function, u, that gets simpler when you differentiate it, and that you're able to guess the antiderivative or integrate v and to fill in this piece and this piece. So we want that du to be simpler than the u it came from. That's really the key to making the choice. Um, and when I look at this integral, I'm in trouble because e to the x doesn't get simpler when I differentiate it. It just gives me another e to the x. And sine and cosine, all the trig functions, they don't get simpler either. Sine is, is just going to differentiate to a cosine. And if I differentiate again, I would just get a sine again and so on. So I'm kind of in a jam here. And this requires kind of a special trick. It's going to be convenient to have a name for the integral. So I'm going to call it i. And what I'm going to do is just start applying integration by parts. And what happens is I find another copy of i, the same integral on the other side of the equation, and then I can gather it together with the original copy. So you'll see what I mean as I get through the example. So I'm going to let u be e to the x, which means du is e to the x dx. I'm going to let dv be the other chunk of the integral, the part that I underlined, sine pi x dx. So I've got to guess the antiderivative of that. And this requires you to think about the chain rule backwards. And it's a real hassle if you have to do an explicit substitution on that. So I would hope you're doing it by guess and check. So I get that v is going to be basically a negative cosine pi x. So let's write that real quick. I'm trying to illustrate how to just how people really do this guessing and checking in their head. So it's basically a negative cosine pi x. But when I differentiate this, just sort of mentally, uh, that would give me a positive sine pi x, and then the chain rule would give me a factor of pi, and I, I wouldn't quite have what I started with, so I've got to prepare to kill that factor of pi like that. Now if you differentiate this, it does give you what you started with. All right, then we can plug into integration by parts. So I have my original integral. See, I don't have to write it for a minute. I'm just going to call it i is going to be uv, so that's negative e to the x over pi cosine pi x minus the integral of v du. Well, that has a negative 1 over pi out in front, so I'm going to just bring that out in front. And here's v and du. Well, that was just e to the x dx, so I'm just going to put the e to the x over here because it looks nicer. All right, so you might think we've gained nothing from this because we ended up with an integral that's just as bad as the one we started with, but there's some hope here. If I were to, if I were to let dv equal that piece and then integrate it, I would end up with a sine pi x. So let's see how this works out. I'm going to let... I'm just going to try to line that up real quick. I'm going to let u equal e to the x, same pattern, du is e to the x dx. Let dv equal cosine pi x dx. Guess the antiderivative of v, and I end up with v equals basically sine pi x. But if I differentiate that, I miss by a factor of pi, so I need to prepare for that. And now I'm ready to re-express this integral. So I have i equals negative e to the x over pi cosine pi x plus 1 over pi times this new integral that I've transformed. So I'm going to put that in brackets, and I get a uv out of that. So that's e to the x times 1 over pi sine pi x. So I'm going to call e to the x over pi sine pi x. That's the uv piece. And then minus the integral of v du. So v is 1 over pi 
du is e to the x dx, okay? So um, v is 1 over pi sine pi x, okay. And I'll just close my brackets. So I can clean things up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 1 over pi through this, and I end up with e to the x over pi squared sine pi x. And then in this integral, I can pull a negative 1 over pi out. I'm really just pulling a 1 over pi out. And then I'm also distributing this 1 over pi to it, so I end up with minus 1 over pi squared integral e to the x sine pi x dx. And this thing is just another copy of i, and that's the key to this whole double reverse trick. If I then take this entire term with the integral in it and add it to the left-hand side, I'm going to end up with i plus 1 over pi squared times i is equal to negative e to the x over pi cosine pi x plus e to the x over pi squared sine pi x. And I can factor the i out. I have i times 1 plus 1 over pi squared is equal to that stuff on the right hand side. And then I can solve for i. It's just going to be 1 over this term, which I'm going to want to clean up. You don't want to leave it as a complex fraction that's considered rude. Um, I suppose writing stuff is also considered rude, but I'm willing to be rude to not have to write all that stuff again. And I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of this thing by pi squared to clean it up. And then I'll be able to express my final answer. So I have pi squared over pi squared plus 1 times negative e to the x over pi cosine pi x plus e to the x over pi squared sine pi x. So this is a classic move whenever you're trying to integrate something that has two terms where neither one of them is going to get simpler when you differentiate it. Finally, if you like, you could clean this up a little bit by distributing the pi squared into the interior and pulling out the e to the x. So I have e to the x over pi squared plus 1 times the quantity negative pi cosine pi x. And let's see, pi squared distributed to this one leaves me with no pi is on the sine term, so sine pi x. That looks a little bit cleaner.